So in this video I'm going to show you how to install Hive MQ as your MQTT broker. And uh, just as a quick example of what MQTT can do is it's an extremely lightweight protocol that can allow devices like this to communicate to computers. You can see I'm holding the button down. This is actually an industrial control system. But anyway, let's go ahead and do on blue. You can see it's very responsive. Also, I've got it on my phone, so. So this is a $30 TI launch pad and a Wi-Fi module. This is an industrial control system called Ignition, but um, obviously you can connect uh, these up to just about anything. Okay, so HiveMQ, you can download it for free. Um, it just limits you to 25 connections at a time. If you need more than that, then you need to purchase a, a license. So go ahead and fill out your info here. Click download. I'm also going to get some extensions. So um, after we get HiveMQ running, I want to install the security plugin so go ahead and grab this guy download and then also I'm gonna grab I'm also gonna grab the MQTT message log that uh, kinda shows us the traffic and then also um, if you want to run HiveMQ as a service look in the user guide uh, I'm not, not going to do it, but, uh, oh, hang on. Okay, so all you got to do is download the HiveMQ service tool, unzip it, put it in the directory, and run it, and it will install your HiveMQ to run as a service. I'm also going to need a test client, so um, use the test client you like, or uh, you can go to eclipse.org slash pow go to tools then go down here to the download Windows 32-bit for mine okay so I have the zip files uh, on my desktop and I extracted them right here so for starters here's the HiveMQ folder um, I'm actually gonna just run it from here you don't have to install it um, Later on, once I have it all set up, I'm going to move this whole folder to the program files directory and let it live there. But for this demo, um, running it on the desktop is going to be easier. So to start HiveMQ, go into the bin and do run.bat. So it's saying there is no license found, so we're restricted to 25 connections. We've started. Now we need to test Hive MQ to see if it's working. So I'm going to open up my test client here. All right, I'm going to do a new connection. Um, So connect, and then we're going to subscribe to a topic. So we'll go ahead and subscribe it, it to a topic called test, and then we're going to publish to a topic called test. And we see that instantly we published and we received at the same time. So this MQTT broker is working fine. Let's go ahead and shut down HiveMQ. I'm do, going to hold down Control and push C, and it's going to do a shutdown. You could also just X out. It usually is fine. So let's go ahead and add authentication. Um, you don't need authentication if you're just testing and playing around, but if you're going to open this thing up, especially on the internet, I mean, you definitely need to do something so you're not just wide open. So let's go ahead and get back in here, and there's a plugins directory. Well, it's pretty simple to install a plugin. We'll go ahead and 
grab the file authentication plugin and these two files go along with it and I'm going to also grab the uh, message log module its uh, plugin I'll uh, explain that in a minute so the only thing I have to edit for authentication is this credentials.properties file and you can see they have some demonstration users here I'm going to add another one called guest and password one two three four five save let's go ahead and run HiveMQ bin and we're going to want to get our test client going here alright so now when we try to connect it instantly tells us that we're not authorized so we simply go say let's use the login go back over here connect and it's happy. We can subscribe, publish, and if we, you can see every time that we publish a message, it shows up here in the console. It's also saving it to a file, and this is because we added the log uh, plugin. So now if we look in look in the root directory of HiveMQ and go to log this log now is uh, recording you know the name of the client and what was sent uh, it's great for troubleshooting HiveMQ can do uh, a lot of other things as well um, you can cluster HiveMQ uh, servers so that you know they're uh, synchronizing data together um, one of the features I like uh, and use is um, web sockets so you can run TCP sockets alongside web sockets at the same exact time so your devices in your house can use the standard TCP socket but you can also use a web socket for uh, something on the internet and uh, to enable something like that, you go into the config directory. So let's edit this config file and look at it real quick. So um, this is the standard config file, but there's lots of examples on how you can modify it to do other things. So here's a sample of MQTT and WebSocket. You see the difference is just that here's the TCP listener but they've added this section for the WebSocket listener so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna put it here I'm gonna move that one out so that I can save it in case I mess something up here and we're ready to go let's go ahead and run it so now it's going to start up and the TCP socket and the web socket is going to be running all in one in order to test the WebSocket, you need a, a different client that can uh, test WebSockets. And if you're going to use a tool, like an online tool, um, you're going to have to forward the, the ports through your router. So you can go to, say, HiveMQ and find their web uh, socket client, free to use. So you can connect to your IP address and test the WebSocket out. 